brought to you by Hula Frog, local things for kids to do. HulaFrog.com. Hello, and thanks for watching Illusionist Michael Howell Live. I'd like to thank our sponsor, Hula Frog. I'd also like to thank our guest sponsor, Macaroni Kid, Arizona Family, Williams Magic Shop, and Mildred and Dildred. If you guys would like to find out what supplies you're going to need for each episode, you can go to IllusionistMichaelHowell.com and click the Illusionist Michael Howell Live link, and uh, you can find out what supplies you're going to need. Um, unfortunately, we had to cancel the Chuck Wag Wagner uh, show, Broadway star, uh, due to the COVID. Hopefully, after things blow over, we get to bring, we'll bring him back into town. But as of now, we don't know when that will be. Okay, so as you can see, we have uh, the numbers 4207. For you history buffs out there, this is pretty cool. Watch on the count of three, say the magic words. Hula frog, ready? One, two, three. Ta da! It's magic! I think that's actually the last one of those, so you guys won't see any more of those. I promise. Those are just some of my favorite uh, little tricks. Upcoming events uh, Magic Factory uh, LLC and uh, Ramson Production was pre uh, presenting Magical Journey at the Burger Performing Arts Center. I think now my company, Magic Factory LLC, is going to be presenting it solely um, by itself. Um, but we don't know where or when um, because the venue is not available uh, or going to be open at that time. So we're working on some other options. We'll see what's going to happen. Uh, we're going to do our science experiment. We got the beautiful Jerrica that's going to come on the screen. And uh, what we're doing is we're making sticky ice. <laughs> that's funny. I don't know why sticky ice. It makes me laugh. Uh, so we're going to get a bowl of water. So if you guys get your bowl of water with ice, so put your ice in your bowl of water. If you don't have it, Jerry just pouring water on the ground. I don't know why. <laughs> All right, and then uh, you're gonna need your salt and you're gonna need your yarn. So you're gonna pour salt on the ice. So this is fun. Salt on the ice. There you go. And if you drop any, you can throw a little over your shoulder for good luck. Um, and then you're going to press on the string on the ice for about one minute. And then uh, once you lift it up, uh, the salt melts the ice and it freezes to the string. And then you got sticky ice. So this experiment takes up to a minute. Maybe we'll come back. Maybe Jared can watch it and we'll bring it back on uh, later on in the episode. She'll let me know when a minute is up. Uh, but right now, guys, it's my favorite time and part of the show where we get to interview our guest, Keith White, professional skateboarder, professional skater. I'm super excited to have him on the show. Now let's, uh, let's go into the screen. Thank you, Macaroni Kid, uh, for sponsoring Keith White. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, we have our guest, Keith uh, White, with us here. Uh, thanks for coming on the show, man. No problem. Thank you. I appreciate it. Um, what inspired you to become a skater? Well, when I was six years old, I was on vacation in Baltimore with my family, and we were walking towards the aquarium, and then on our way there, I just saw a bunch of skateboarders, and one of them popped what I thought was a kickflip, and I was like, that's what I want to do for the rest of my life. And then we went to a video arcade and my cousin was playing that game Top Skater, which is basically an arcade screen and there's like a skateboard attached to it and well, that's the controller. And I was like, okay, even more like reason to get into skateboarding. And then from there, like the spark was ignited and got my first skateboard that summer. And like that whole story of how I got my first skateboard is like, it's a tale in its own. Long story short, some dude in the video arcade in Virginia Beach is throwing down $50 bills on the ground. And I'm a six-year-old kid. Me and my brother, we run up. We grab as many 50s as we can. We go, like, to the hotel we're staying at. I'm like, Mom, look at all this money I got. She's like, where'd you get that from? I'm like, some dude was throwing it on the ground in the arcade. And I was like, I'm going to buy a skateboard. And she's like, okay, cool. So that's what we did. What a skateboard. Wow. Hey, they always say everything happens for a reason. And look where it led you, man. That's pretty awesome. Um, it's not. Like, I still remember what it says too. It's like a plastic little skateboard, and it said wow. bungee skating. <laughs> That's so cool. I know I got a skateboard as a kid, but uh, I really tested gravity, and I could never get it to work for me. <laughs> so I got into magic instead. So uh, that's probably better. 
I didn't, I, and I still break bones and stuff doing what I do because I do stunts and all that stuff. That's a question I, I didn't think to ask. Have you ever like injured yourself during? Uh, no, I, I've like injured myself pretty bad, but I've never like broken a bone. I've like had some, a couple of concussions and like oh. nasty sprains. Yeah, because like, here and there, right that's about it. Wow. Yeah, you guys do some. I've seen some crazy stunts uh, with your uh, skating. Uh, what skater did you look up to as a kid? As a kid, my favorite skater was Corey Duffel. He was like the punk, like the true punk rock aspect of skateboarding. And like his whole style, I tried to like mimic like from his clothes to his hair, the music he listened to. Because at the time I was heavily into like the whole punk rock subculture and like sk skateboarding tied into that. Like skating and punk were like synonymous. So it was only more the reason. So, okay, dress like your favorite skater. And I did that for a few years. And then as I got older, my style switched up. And I was like, hmm, there's like more than one style to get into. And it was like pretty cool. So as I got older, I just like kept the true spirit of Corey Duffel, but melded other different skate styles to try to create my own style. Gotcha. Uh, cool, man. It's, it's worked out. I like it. That's really cool. Um, yeah, and you got to do it. And, and it was your job. And it's, it's still your job. I mean, that's pretty awesome that you get to do what you love and make a living out of it. Uh, what's yeah, your favorite? What's your favorite trick? A fakie hard flip. It's so there's four there's four stances on a skateboard and fakie is the opposite of your regular stance, but you skate with the nose of your board. And then a hard flip is a trick where the board flips in between your legs. Oh, cool. And it's just like an even more technical aspect when you're doing it in a different position because. Everything is moving differently. Your 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 body's positioned in a different way. Your foot placement is like totally set askew, and you're just like, it's hard. It's yeah. a hard trick, but I can pull it off stylish. I That's like it. cool, <laughs> man. You know what I've noticed about audiences or or people watching, whether it be magic skateboarding or anything, um, some of the harder tricks that we enjoy doing or get a kick out of, people like they don't they they don't get as, as excited about it at us because they don't know how hard it is i do juggling as well so i'll do a trick that i've been working on for years and people won't get as excited about that like juggling trick or that magic trick as they do about some of the simpler tricks does that happen with you with skateboarding like you think it's cool or other skateboarders find it's cool but um like just your yeah, like, can you do a kickflip and i'm like that's harder than the kickflip and they're like yeah but can you do a kickflip it's like that's what every person's first instinct of skateboarding is yeah. do a kickflip <laughs> do an ollie it's because like they only know what they see on tv and right right yeah been from video games like basically like yeah. they'll ask you oh can you do any of the stuff in ea skate i'm like yeah but it's not none of the like super unrealistic three backside 360 flip blunt like into a blunt side slide down like a 50 stair handrail those that's like unfathomable and yeah that's for video games right yeah yeah people think uh well with 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 what i do uh there's some magicians that do a lot of like camera tricks on the internet yeah. and on tv and they go oh well i saw this person make a little light bulb and it, he just stretched it out and i'm like yeah sure if i had the camera angles and the computer editing i could do exactly what they did <laughs> people exactly. they don't realize that that's funny um, yeah, they, they, it's like people only see the end result and they don't either appreciate or they don't want to begin to understand the starting process to get that end result. It's just like they just expect that quick result. Exactly. Uh, what does it take to be a skater? It honestly takes dedication and patience because one, you're going to fall a lot. And I mean a lot. Like the first time you step on a skateboard, you can probably like shoot out and fall on your butt and fall on your face. Uh, be prepared to have sore and stiff muscles for the, like the first couple of months while you're just like pushing and trying to get comfortable on the board because it's it's a whole new experience. And most people probably never work out their legs besides walking or jogging. So when you're body uses muscles it's never used before it's going to be pretty strenuous so i would say dedication a strong work ethic and just like a genuine love and appreciation for something new because if you have those three factors anything is possible 
I agree with that 100%. And, I, and if uh, people, like, if they really want to be getting, like, become a skater, um, they just have to be like, dedicated, like you said. And, and that's with magic or juggling or anything they want to do in life. Obviously, I, I just, you know, my brother was a good skateboarder, but I didn't, I was, I lost patience with it. <laughs> so um, right, that's, what happens with, that's what happens with people my little brother like he was skating with me when I got into skateboarding and he kind of progressed a bit faster than me right and he just like stuck with his football because that's what he was into he yeah. was into football and other like sports so I was like there you, you have it. I have my thing perfect. perfect so like my brother was also in the magic and then he ended up taking those skills and he took them to filmmaking which is actually very similar and there's a lot of correlations with each thing. And so now he's doing films and making movies and graphic design and I'm doing magic, which is kind of cool. Um, what advice do you have for future skaters? Be prepared to see a lot of skateboarding on YouTube and Instagram and don't let it discourage you. There are eight year old kids out there who are way better than I was when I started or like when I had my peak and all I can do is just sit back and be like, wow. Yeah. The yeah. groundwork's laid down already for them. So yeah. if, if you want to get into skateboarding, just like be prepared to have a lot of respect for the sport. Be prepared to shed a lot of blood and sweat and tears and just, just have a, a general want to have fun with it. Like don't use it to want to turn pro or get girls or get free stuff because that's what some kids get into, get into like anything for. It's like, I want to do it for the clout. Mm -hmm. Do it for the true love and everything will come. I kid you not. Right. I agree with that 100%. I know a lot of people try to get into magic just to impress their friends or get girls or do all that stuff. And honestly, I do it for many different reasons. The main reason is if I could put one smile on one person's face a day, I'd already succeeded and, and done my job um exactly. I, I like your your dedication thing no matter what you want to do with your life or whether you want to be a skater a magician a doctor um it's really that dedication uh that you have to stick with because in the entertainment industry and in skateboarding i'm sure it's the same uh there's a lot of people that are going to talk about you and say horrible things and yep. put you down and you have to be real strong-willed is what you're saying is what it sounds like is that correct yeah, you, you have to be really strong well because there was a point where like I thought I was like a good enough skater and I entered a bunch of local contests and there were kids who were just either a little bit better than me and they probably had a better personable persona that was able to market and they were able to get on faster or they just had better connections. And if you're given the cheat codes for a video game before you even play the game, of course you're going to want to use the cheat codes and get to the end of the level. But right. Right. If you get the cheat codes when you're halfway through the game, eight, eight, and what I mean by cheat codes is if you have those connections right. and use them until you actually need to use them, yeah. it's more beneficial and more appreciative because some people just, they have those connections, they don't use them, or they use them for the wrong reasons. Or they use uh, them too soon, uh, and, and they don't get that skill up, and then... But when they go back to that person, then you're like, oh, sorry, we've already given you a chance and we're not interested. In yeah, it's exactly. It's like I've, I've invested in you already and like there's, a, I haven't seen any sort of return and it doesn't have to be a financial return. It's like, I gave you two months supply of free boards and you couldn't produce one video clip for me. Right. Kind of, kind of deal. Because like, cause some, cause like skateboarding, it's an expensive hobby or sport, like however you want to take it from buying the new board or like, and then replacement parts are crazy expensive too. So some kids, when they get their first local shop sponsor, that's all they really care about. It's like, oh, I can get free stuff now. Right. Um, and, last question, uh, just out of curiosity, what are some of the sponsors that you've, you've gotten to work with? Uh, so I've gotten to work with Race Fist Propaganda. They were a huge, well, I was a huge supporter of them before they even sponsored me. I got my whole, my whole neighborhood skating their boards. Uh, my first shop sponsor, NYC Swag, they held it down. Um, Homage Brooklyn Skate Shop, like I've gotten to work with them. Uh, they've given me the opportunity to host some of their events. They've sponsored some of my contests that I've thrown. Uh, Airwalk Footwear for giving me the chance to skate with them for a year and be in a documentary. Wow. 
who else, who else, who else? Uh, the entire New York City skate community, there's like, there have been a lot of different companies I've been fortunate to work with wow. and company owners like Steve Raji, you guys, the owner of Five Bro Skateboards, he's a great dude. Wow. But I have to say my biggest one would be Vans Footwear. Wow, that's cool. <laughs> yeah, all, all right, that's, that, that's crazy because like I was fortunate enough to meet the vice president, Steve Van Doren, and like establish a great acquaintance and the building roots of a friendship. And wow. it's like, who would have thought the kid from Flatbush would be friends with like freaking that's... Steve Van Doren? It, it, it's nuts. It's like, <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> That's and he's awesome. like, yeah, like, oh, I've read about you. You're a really good kid. You're like down for the community. And Dude, that's oh, man, cool. that, that, that's great. Like, I've been able to go to Vans Warped Tour and work wow. the Vans. And, like, yeah, it's, it's so it's cool. I think all of us have at least owned a couple pairs of Vans in our life. They're super awesome shoes, man. So that's pretty neat. Well, um, so you have some video that you're gonna that you've sent to us, and we're gonna go ahead and share that with the people watching. Again, I'd like to thank you so much for coming on the show, and uh, yeah, thank you. Have, I appreciate it. Man. Thanks so much. Take care. No problem. Take care. Have a good night. Bye. kid for sponsoring Keith White. That was so cool. I know uh, I always wanted to be good at skateboarding, but I never was. <laughs> and I tried, guys. You got to practice, practice, practice if you want to learn how to do something. Now, uh, this next experiment is super cool. Uh, you're going to need your uh, two cups. Uh, you're going to need one cup of just water, one-fourth water, and then a cup of one-fourth hot water and one-fourth salt. So make sure you have those cups separated. And then you're gonna need three uh, gummy bears. I got my gummy bears, get your gummy bears. And yes, you can eat some while you're doing this experiment. You're gonna put one gummy bear in each cup. So one gummy bear is gonna go with, uh, in the cup with the hot water and one fourth salt. And another gummy bear is gonna go in the cup with just the water. Um, and that's just regular water, not hot. Um, so then you're gonna wait for six hours um, and then your results. So this is the one with just regular water, which is really cool. And the gummy bears grow. So that's the regular water. And then the salt water. I'm actually gonna have Jerrica come on the screen because I want her to show you really close uh, the difference in the sizes of the gummy bears. There we go. So can you show them how much bigger the one in just regular water um, got? It's a, it's kind of neat. It's a oh, bit of a sticky gummy bear there. Here we go. Show them up close. And like I said, this takes about six hours, guys. Um, but it's a very neat experiment to see the gummy bear. And then you, you make it you make it larger, and then you can eat it. So there you go. It's more gummy to eat. Okay, we're gonna move on. Um, we're gonna show you guys. Uh, the result, it's been a minute. Let's see, whoa, it's sticky ice. It's pretty cool, guys, pretty cool. All right, we're gonna move on. So that was those like, science experiments, those are pretty cool. Um, Jerrica, we're gonna do some magic with this amazing magic wand. As you can see there, guys, I have a beautiful magic wand. All right, Jerrica, can you do me a favor? Can you take it? Wait, wait, what? Uh, see, this is why Jerrica, guys, is not is not the magician. We'll just go ahead and skip that trick. That was a little weird. Um, now, what we're going to do, we're going to bring on, uh, our, we have a, a really good friend. His name's Robert, and he's going to come on the, the show, and he's going to help us out. And we're going to tie uh, these handkerchiefs together right here. That's right. It's two handkerchiefs together. We're going to tie them. I'm going to go ahead and tie them right now before Robert gets on the screen. And then uh, Jerrica's going to come on, and then he's going to stick the 
the the handkerchiefs into um, the front of his pants, and me and Jericho are gonna yank it. You guys are gonna say the magic words "hula frog," and then we are gonna have the silks go through his waist. So, Robert, if you could uh, just kind of stand right there, there, and it's okay. They can just see your waist. That's all they have to see. Turn towards the camera so you can look at yourself. There we go, and all the way flat, perfect, and then move, perfect. Uh, and then I'm gonna move over here, and then move a little this way. Come center, center yourself, it's okay if they don't see me very well. Perfect, all right. And then uh, Jerrica, go on the other side of Robert. Robert, bend down so they can see your face and you can say hi. He's the giant of the show, Woo! All right, Jerrica, do me a favor, or Robert, can you take the center and stick it in your, your shorts, just the front of your shorts? Okay. Okay. And pull up your pants. Yeah, we don't want. All right. And then on the count of three, we're going to say the magic words. Hula frog. Ready? One, two, three. Hula frog. Uh, Robert. <laughs> I guess he's a fan of Captain America. All right. Say goodbye, Robert. <laughs> All right. Yeah, big round of applause for Robert. The giant. No, he's not that tall. It just looks tall because... We, had to, we have a very small studio in this apartment, guys. <laughs> so uh, we work with what we got. We're literally shooting in a one bedroom. And I have like four lights, like film lights and stuff. So it's a lot of stuff in a small space. Uh, now uh, I'm going to show you guys one of my uh, favorite types of magic. And you're, you're going to see why I like this magic. Um, I do own Rose Ranch Animal Rescue. We have uh, rescued over, we rescue, we have 75 animals right now. Uh, we just rehomed a cockatoo. We uh, rehomed a puppy dog. And we just took in a uh, big, uh, hairy um, guinea pig. And so it has long hair. It's really cute too, because the rabbits actually cuddle uh, with the guinea pig. They think the guinea pig is a giant pillow which is pretty darn uh, crazy. All right, guys, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you guys. We have a cool looking tube. And not only do we have a cool looking tube, but we've got a neat looking frame with a little bit of magic. Say the magic words, hula frog, ready? One, two, three, hula frog. We magically make one silk appear, but not only do we have the silk, but guys, it's an adorable hamster. And yes, she's a pregnant hamster. That's why she's so big. Oh, there's another silk. And another silk. And another silk. Oh, what is this? This one's making a lot of noise. <laughs> that hamster is super excited. And last but not least, guys, a bunny! Thank you, thank you, thank you. And all of these animals have been rescued. We uh, rescue these animals. We go to hospitals, schools, um, when the COVID is not happening. And we educate kids about these animals and uh, the kind of care that they need and give them an opportunity that um, they wouldn't normally get. Now, if you guys want to find out more about Rose Ranch Animal Rescue, you can go to uh, illusionistmichaelhowell.com and there's a Rose Ranch Animal Rescue page. Also, uh, if you go to illusionistmichaelhall.com and click the Illusionist Michael Hall live link, there's all the information um, on there as well. We have a GoFundMe. Uh, we sell t-shirts for $45. And you can get yourself an autographed picture of me with an animal to scare the bugs away, guys. <laughs> so that's a little bit about Rose Ranch Animal Rescue. Also, go to the website, join the fan club. It's only, I think, $35 to be a, a fan. And you get a bunch of free stuff in the mail. Okay, it's that time of the day, guys, where we tell the world's worst jokes. Jerrica, what did the treasure chest say to the pirate? No, I'm just kidding, that's not a joke. Okay, here we go. Where does an elephant keep its suitcase? Where does an elephant keep its suitcase? In its trunk! <laughs> <laughs> this is terrible. Guys, and they get worse. Okay. Where, okay. Jerrica, where do you put barking dogs? Where do you put barking dogs? In the barking lot! <laughs> okay. What do you call a square that's been in an accident? 
What do you call a square that's been in an accident? A rectangle. <laughs> a rectangle. Wow, that's terrible. And we have a bonus one, guys. This is a knock knock joke. <laughs> These are so bad. Okay, knock knock. Who's there? Radio. Radio who? Radio not. Here I come. <laughs> ah! <laughs> All right, guys, thank you so much for watching Illusionist Michael Howell Live. We will see you guys next Saturday with guests. Uh, oh, we have a guest from the Reed Park Zoo, guys. Education coordinator Jed Dodds talking about Pinsy the baby elephant. And right now, uh, we're still in the works, but I'm hoping that we get to be there with the elephant because that would be so cool. But uh, come watch us next Saturday. Thanks so much, guys.